Okay, IBAASL2. Uh, we're not going to do all of 5.4 yet, uh, you know, for various reasons, but uh, we're just going to get the brain thinking a little bit uh, about a, a little bit of an application of derivatives. I hesitate to even call it an application. It's just uh, if I were to take your graphing calculator away from you, how we could figure out uh, some things about the graph of x cubed minus 6x squared plus 2. Um, you guys, we've been doing a lot of derivatives, so let's just take the derivative right away because we can just use that straight up power rule. It's not too bad. We get 3x squared minus 6x. And then remember that the 2 goes away because the derivative of a constant is just 0, which makes sense. Some, uh, a student came up to me the other day and said, Mr. Jolly, that makes sense because if you have a, you know, just a y equals 2 or something like that, that's a flat line and the slope of a flat line is 0. So absolutely. Now, um, in a past lesson, we talked about um, horizontal tangents. So remember that horizontal tangents, if I were to draw a little picture over here, um, would be the spots where, you know, it's going uphill. Uh, oops, sorry. Um, you know, it's your surfboards are going uphill. They are positive. Your slopes are all positive of the tangents. But then at a certain point, they flatten out and you get this um, slope of zero. Now, with this picture I've drawn, that happens in two different places, here and here. So, um, if I take the derivative and set it equal to zero, I can figure out where those horizontal tangent spots are, which are like the tops of mountains and the bottoms of valleys on a graph or a roller coaster, whatever. Um, now, looking at just this, um, it, it's not it's not a classic quadratic where it's like something x squared minus something x plus something on the end and then you do all your factoring techniques but this is actually easier to factor than those and I feel like a lot of students forget that you can always pull out a common monomial these both have a 3 in common and they both have an x in common so this becomes 3x times x minus 2 now you the same way when you factor and you factor it down into two binomials um, and you set them equal to zero after that, you do the same thing with this. I feel like students just forget that this is like a factor, 3x. So you set them both equal to zero. You say 3x is equal to zero and x minus 2 is equal to zero. So we get x is equal to zero and x is equal to 2. Now, what that means in terms of a graph is that it flattens out. Uh, you know, the tangents flatten out at those spots. Now, the problem is, when it comes to just sketching a graph, I'm not sure if that means it was coming downhill, like this, and then at zero, it flattens out, and then goes uphill, and then at two, it turns around and goes this way. I'm not using the actual blocks, I'm just, you know, imagine that two is right here. This is zero. Um, so it could do that, or, sorry, I'm getting the zoom right, it could, instead of coming down from the top and then hitting a horizontal tangent, it could come up from the bottom and then flatten out right there and then turn around and then turn around again at two. You know, if this is two. So, I know it's one of these situations that it's either like, you know, coming down from the top and then it turns around and goes uphill and then turns around and goes downhill again, or it could be going uphill, then downhill, then uphill again. Um, if I take your graphing calculator away, some people might be like, well, how, how do I figure that out? Um, it's all, still all about the derivative. Remember that derivatives tell you the directions of the surfboards. Like, you know, if the derivative is negative at this, in this part of the graph, that means it's going downhill. And then if the derivative is positive in this part of the graph, that means it's going uphill and then downhill again. So we can actually use the derivative uh, to tell us which way the graph is pointing, whether or not it's going uphill or downhill. So let's use a table. Notice on top, I have just straight up x values, and on bottom, I have derivative values. So we're going to use our derivative. What was it? 3x squared minus 6x. So f prime of x is equal to, let's just put it here for reference so I can use it. 
So what I'm going to do is plug in a negative 2 into the derivative. So f prime of negative 2 is equal to 3 times negative 2 squared minus, oops, minus 6 times negative 2. Now, uh, negative 2 squared is 4 times 3 is 12. Then uh, negative 6 times negative 2 is positive 12 as well. So I believe this is 24. So far, so good. Now I put in a negative 1 in that same spot. 3 times negative 1 squared is 3. Then plus 6. I believe this is 9. Put a 0 into both of those, and you get a 0. Now wait, I already kind of knew that, because that means that it is a horizontal tangent at the spot, which I figured out up here. It's almost like at the two, oh, I didn't include a two, Never mind. Um, plug a one into uh, this spot and this spot, and we get three minus six, which is negative three. Then plug a three in there, and we get 27 minus 18, which is, wait, no, I didn't do that right. Uh, oh, no, I did it. 27 minus 18 is 9. And then put a 4 in there. You get 16 times 3. Uh, I should really grab a calculator. It's a little early in the morning for that. Um, let me see. 3 times 16 minus 24. So this is 24 as well. Hey, look at that. It's the same slope here as here. Interesting. Uh, and then the 5, 3 times 25 minus 30, 45. Now, remember what these pink values actually are. These are, whoops, um, the slopes. Remember, we're plugging them into the derivative. So these are slopes because we put them in a slope machine. Now, at negative 2, this means that there's a slope of a tangent going, that's 24. That is a very steep uphill slope. And then at negative 1, it's still going uphill because these two numbers are positive. Then it turns around at 0. There's a horizontal tangent. And then, because this is a negative slope, that means it's going downhill. So if you think about this, let's use a different color, like... This one. Um, that means in this section of the graph, in terms of x's, it's going uphill right here. Then it flattens out. Then it's negative here. And then after one, I think two, like we already knew that two was the other horizontal tangents, like a turnaround point. Um, it starts going uphill again. So it's like. The rest of the graph here is like uphill, 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 so So this means that it went uphill, flattened out, downhill, flattened out, then uphill again. So of the two drawings I came up with up here, it doesn't start going downhill on to the left of zero because in our table to the left of zero here, these were all positive numbers, so it was going uphill which means it looks something like this. And in fact, if you graph it on your calculator, I'll do my best to sketch what it actually looks like. Come on, buddy. Oh my gosh, what is happening? One more, let's try. There we go. Um, it looks like this, it goes and then flattens out at positive two and then it turns around and then it dips real low and then it comes back up again. So this is where two is, and this is zero. So yeah, it looks something like this. Um, where we're kind of headed is being able to figure out like uh, what coordinates this would be and what coordinates this would be. We already know the x parts of the coordinates. I'm sure you guys can see where this is headed about where you can find the y part. But I don't wanna to do too much of this lesson. Uh, I just wanna get you guys thinking about like derivatives can you know, tell you a lot about a graph without even touching the y equals button on your calculator. All right, you guys.
Good luck out there.